of Animal Planet's Whale Wars and founder of the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, Captain Paul Watson is over here. Captain, how are you, Captain? <laughs> nice to meet you. Oh, I thought maybe you'd wear your captain's hat and I could do a jaunty sea song. Oh, I hate wearing hats. I never do. <laughs> All right. Well, tell me about your ordeal with the Somali pirates. I'm sure... Oh, no, that's... A, I'm, yeah, that's... <laughs> No, you, uh, you're a badass. I think you're fantastic. I wanted to have you on because we were talking last week about the plane that's missing and they're looking in the ocean. And I said, you know, the plane is the least important thing they could pull out of that ocean. There is what we learned when we saw them searching for all these weeks is that there's just so much crap in the ocean. And as someone who's always on the high seas, you must see this all the time, right? Oh, we do. There's about 7 million tons of plastic in the ocean floating around in gyres, and it's causing a significant problem for birds and fish who are dying in the millions. Is that the worst thing that's in the ocean, plastic? Well, plastic's worse than oil, you know, it's uh, because it just stays there. And uh, it breaks down into little particles which are ingested by fish and, and by birds and kills them. What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen in the ocean that doesn't belong there? Oh, the weirdest thing in the ocean? Uh, well, actually, everything that I've seen there belongs there except for plastic, I, I gather, but, uh, and Japanese whalers. Japanese whalers, yeah. <laughs> well, you're doing a hell of a job fighting them. I know a lot of countries are against you. You know, there's, you're on their shit list. U.S., Canada, Norway, J Japan, Germany, they, that, and I would take that as a badge of honor. I'm sure you do. Well, for 12 years now, everybody's been calling us pirates and eco-terrorists and outlaws for opposing Japan's activities in the Southern Ocean Whale Sanctuary. But this week, on last Monday, the International Court of Justice in The Hague ruled that they are the outlaws, not us. And how will that change things, practically? The Japanese foreign ministry says they're not going to return to the Southern Ocean, but the Japanese fisheries industry or ministry says they are. So we don't know. They'll have to fight it out in Tokyo, and we'll see at the end of the year. But we will be there ready if they do come back. Well, they can, uh, <laughs> they can call you an eco-terrorist, but one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. So well, I'm not an eco-terrorist. I don't work for BP. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, how, how far along are we with killing the ocean? It's a very serious uh, situation in our oceans. Uh, Jacques Cousteau said just before he died that the oceans are dying in our time. And he also said if the, nation, uh, the navies of the world had any sense of moral responsibility, they would be defending our oceans instead of playing silly little war games with each other. Right. And that's what the, uh, the navy should, should do. Last month I addressed the French navy and the French senate and asked them if they would cooperate in our efforts to stop poaching, um, especially off the African coast. Right now we have two patrol boats that are working with the governments of Senegal and Liberia to try and stop poaching. They arrested a Russian trawler just a couple of months ago. And the problem what we're trying to head off is piracy. Because the reason that there are pirates in Somalia is because the real pirates, the European and Asian fishing fleets, impoverished those people. Right. Took everything away from them, drove them out of desperation to what they're doing now. Because they killed all the fish? They took they... everything. Right. And we don't want to see that happen in Mauritania, Senegal, in, um, in, in West Africa. And we're trying to head that off by giving them the means to enforce their own laws. Right. I mean, a lot of your methodology is using Using economic means, right, to fight to fight the problem that you're trying to draw attention to. Yes, so we're not actually a protest organization. We're an interventionist organization, an anti-poaching organization, and we work in partnership, for instance, with the government of Ecuador or Senegal or Guatemala. And I mean, just last month we arrested a number of illegal fishing operations off the Guatemalan coast, and so we try to give them the means to uh, to actually uphold their own laws. So, okay, so the the problem in the ocean is obviously crap like plastic that's in there, but they're also warmer, right, than they used to be. They're more acidic. Um, what I'm trying to get at is how long do we have before the oceans die and what happens to us if the oceans die? Well, the United Nations says that all the world's fisheries will collapse by 2048. Coral reefs may be gone by 2025. But I've uh, so there's no fish in fish are disappearing. Right. And uh, the message that I try to get across all the time is simple and that is if the oceans die, we die. We don't live on this planet with a dead ocean. It provides the very foundation of our existence. 80% of our oxygen supply comes from phytoplankton. Uh, the oceans regulate temperature, climate. And uh, if the oceans die, we die. And it's, uh, uh, that's the message I'm trying to hammer through. It doesn't matter whether you live in the Himalayas or in Colorado or in Los Angeles. It affects you. 
So are there people alive right now on Earth who could see the end of the world because we kill the oceans? I think that there's been reports even in the Pentagon that this is a serious uh, situation. Hmm. So maybe if people with children should probably care about that a little. They should care. <laughs> I think... I don't have kids, but, you know, I if I had a three-year-old, I'd, you know, I'd be... Protecting biodiversity in our ocean, I think, is the single most important thing we should be addressing. Uh, the UN released a report this week, again, very scary. I mean, all the reports are scary. It just, like, every report is scarier than the last. They're like police academy movies. You can't believe that <laughs> each succeeding one is worse than the ones that came before, but somehow they are. And I, one of the things they said in it, which I found amazing, is that the fish, because the oceans are getting warmer, are heading either to, like, Antarctica or to the Arctic Circle. The fish are working the poles, basically. <laughs> That's the only place that they can find, I guess, the temperature that is pleasing to them. Well, ironically, the, the, um, the Antarctic and the Arctic are getting warmer, and that's causing other places to get colder. I mean, people who are, you know, this summer, say, well, this winter, they were saying, uh, well, just look at the snow. That's evidence that there's no cl uh, global warming. It's actually climate change. It shouldn't be called global warming. But right. as the Arctic gets warmer, it'll be colder in the U.S. and in Europe. And if it breaks down the Atlantic and Bayer, which takes the Gulf of Mexico's warm water up towards Europe, then you're looking at a very difficult situation for Europe. It could plunge it into a deep freeze. Well, I was talking about this problem recently on this show, and I mentioned the fact that the only sea creature that likes this is the jellyfish, uh, that they like it warmer. They're one of the few creatures that think this is a good thing. I guess they don't think, uh, but they feel that this is a good thing. <laughs> is it possible we, we are left with the world where the jellyfish rule? <laughs> it is symptomatic of a, of a dying ocean when you have a proliferation of jellyfish. Uh, when you see a lot of jellyfish, you know that that particular ecosystem is in trouble. Speaking of plastic, you know, uh, plastic bags flowing in the ocean look like jellyfish, and uh, right. turtles eat them and they die. So, uh, you know, it goes back to plastic being a problem. One of the things that we are, we're working with is... the turtle thinks it's a jellyfish? Yeah, and they swallow them, and a sperm whale recently died with a plastic garbage bag in its throat, so the garbage is all over the place. And uh, so we're working on this thing called the Vortex Project, uh, with Farrell Williams, actually, and uh, to get people to, uh, to find ways of extracting plastic from the ocean, recycling it into clothes. There's seven million tons of the right. stuff out there, and we've got to find a way to get it out. And we could make that hat he wears. <laughs> Thank you, I don't Captain. Know Keep doing the great work you're doing. We really appreciate it. Thanks. All right, Captain Watson, let's meet our panel.